So the only way to make this work is to actually rip up all this floor. Yes, actually. But before we jump ahead of ourselves, I'm Tyler, this is Todd, and for the last few years, we've been building an off-grid home in the middle of the woods, providing our own food, water, and even our own electricity. You didn't think we were roughing it, did you? I feel cheap. <laughs> We've learned that living off-grid doesn't have to be the stereotypical cabin in the woods without running water. It can be whatever we want it to be. Good morning. Hope you enjoyed the end of your summer. We enjoyed our little break. It was nice to kind of just put the camera down and focus on some things. There's been some stuff we've had to work on in the background that has yeah, taken a lot, a lot of time. So the first one is the siding on the house was installed incorrectly. So when the contractors were putting it on, they weren't putting the J channel on the sides, which compromises keeping the water out. And so we had the supplier come out and look at the install and they confirmed that it does all have to come off, unfortunately, which means some of it's going to be salvage some of it we're not going to be able to so we're going to see what we can do kind of like piecemeal it as we work our way around the rest of the house and then yeah. place a big order for the missing material obviously we didn't do all that time of the water membrane and like that was so much work yeah to just have water end up in the house so then once we got a plan for the siding it was discovered that where the tower attaches to the house isn't able to support the weight of the tower attached to the house. So we've been working with an engineer on shoring all that up. And then- Which, by the way, not our fault. Yeah, and then on Just top of the that, record. There was the ventilation. So originally we were going to go with this system called Lunos that we would have ended up having like 12 holes in the side of our house to get airflow to meet building code. Also remember that time that we did that one hole, how much work <laughs> that was? Imagine doing that 12 times. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of work. So we found a company that understood our vision and our idea. Thanks for coming. No problem. Yeah, we just wanted to... Make sure we're on the same path. We now have to go through all the work of ripping up the floors over there so that we can I get duct work <laughs> in. It's gonna be, it's gonna be something. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. I smell the coffee is just about ready. I yeah. feel like we need to get a little bit of energy, a little bit of pep before we go over. Also, I do quickly just wanna say, if for some reason we're not able to be here on a Sunday, we will always, always, always let you guys know whether it's on Instagram, the community page, on YouTube. We can put like a little video of how you can like navigate that to check. Yeah. I know a lot of you were worried of like, is everything okay? We are doing really, really, <laughs> Squirrel's not doing okay. She's not doing okay. <laughs> but like we're in a really good place and taking this time to kind of like recalibrate and figure out what we need to do was really needed and important. So yeah. yeah, thanks for understanding. But anyway, we're gonna get to work because that floor is not going to lift itself. Yeah, we got a lot of work to do, let's go. Do you wanna carry me over though? Living in a daydream, ooh, such a sweet thing. Life on a big screen, it's such a beautiful scene, yeah. Living in a daydream, ooh, such a sweet thing. How are you cutting that? This has to come up, you said. Yeah, but why, we were trying to save that piece. You were, this is the line to cut. Meet me on the rooftop. Now pass me the ox on the jukebox. Man, we can make a- Turns out, this is really difficult. So what should have happened is all of this subfloor should have been screwed down. See this big open section here? All along, we knew the ductwork was gonna go in here and that this floor was just temporary, so. Yeah, I mean. It really pays to follow instructions. Living in a daydream. Ooh, such a sweet thing. Sweet thing. Life on a big screen. It's such a beautiful scene. Yeah, that's right. Living in a daydream. Ooh, such a sweet thing. Hey, how's it going? I'm working on the plumbing. We got all this up. I wasn't sure your exact path. I didn't know you were here. I think this is going. So I come down these two by four walls here. Yeah, and just talk your means in. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd count it on. This wall, most likely. It doesn't have a drain, it's ERB. Do HRVs have a drain? HRVs do. HRV. ERBs recover the moisture as well, okay? Because they're gonna have to get in here to run that fresh air down and an exhaust, so. So you might want to cut a little. Cut there. Okay. 
technically can pop that out. And that is a prime example of why it pays to have the experts in. So we were gonna have bathroom fans and hoods and all of these different things in spaces that we thought that we needed, but because we're putting in an ERV that's gonna go up there, we're gonna be able to recover the hot, moist air from the bathroom and be able to use that energy in the ERV and then disperse it throughout the home. It's way more efficient than just having a typical bath fan. We had no idea until literally this moment. Plus, I'm also happy because now we don't have to have a bulkhead in the yeah. bathroom. And if there's anything you've learned about me over all this time, it's that I hate visual obstructions. So I don't care about the efficiency. <laughs> I just care about the bulkhead. Yeah. The, <laughs> the banker and the, the designer. designer. <laughs> How are you finding it? Good. How are you finding it? Coming. Slow. Yeah. I got a screw stuck in a screw here. And there's no way, like this square here, if we lift up that square. That square. Right here, remember how there's no subfloor here? Like if we got this square. We need to be able to get into here. This is the main line going, taking all the plumbing to the sewer. But what I mean though, is like if this was up, would, would you be able to crawl in? But the plumber's pipes need to pop up here. So uh, I need to cut this open, they need to glue in the toilet, the sink, all of these connections along the way. It's not just a straight pipe. I see. So we want fresh air being on that side of the beam. I would think, because you're going to have, you have two fresh over there. Yeah. What I would focus on is letting them know what you need pulled up for the floor and trying to start some Yeah, so, some and then, so what's, you want to try to get the exhaust in the kitchen, which would be like here. The issue is all these bolts that hold the subfloor Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. But I'll cut in between all the beams and you'll have like this kind of opening all the way down. That should be fun. Like I said, I should be able to like feed it across. Things are really coming together with all the ducting. Very happy with how it's looking. So where we're at, we've got all of the holes for each room downstairs. So this ducting all through here runs to each room up the wall. And then that up there is where the ERV system is going to live. What Todd and I have been doing while all the ducting is going in is continuing to work on any pathways that the guys need for the piping. So. What we're stuck on is this area right here. So we've managed to rip up this piece of the container. We've got a little bit of a pathway right here, but that's where it's causing us grief, hey? Eh? Yeah, so what it is, this is the subfloor that was installed after the house was in place. And then this is the original subfloor of the container, which is like this thick. And then they have these bolts that are holding them on but they've gone rusty and like stuck onto the metal and we can't get them out, which means we can't lift it up. So I think now what we have to do is actually just cut it in strips. In sections, yeah. All the way up. Do out. you want to try maybe like putting that stuff on the bolts and just leaving it just for a little and see how it is? Yeah. I'm sure, it's a penetrating loop. Ooh. I think that's our best bet. Like just put some in. That's what I've done. Oh, yeah. Got some in there. All it's doing is burning. The penetrating loop. It's not good when the loop gets too hot. I guess we can go have a little, little break. Yeah. And then if not, I'm gonna take my frustrations out and just start crying while I cut these. <laughs> it's very like sticky and humid. We're literally dripping sweat here today. Yeah. But um, we're getting it done. It feels, it feels good and empowering after like all of this time and setbacks. This smells good. Maybe I'm just getting high off it. Oh, it does smell good. <laughs> but it feels it feels good that we're like moving forward. Of course, there are going to be things to figure out along the way and more hiccups to come, but it feels different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I just don't feel anymore. At least we can laugh. <laughs> yeah, there's not much else we can do. No. Apparently we can't build a house, but we can laugh. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to go make a coffee or like fuel up just for a bit. We need to get out of here. The best buds. Potato time. Oh yeah. I don't know how I get roped into these things, you guys. So, I don't know if you remember, but our potato 
crops got devastated by the Colorado potato beetle. And now all that we're left with is all this clover and weeds. It looks really messy, but we did leave it intentionally because we think there might still be some down there. So Not we'll because see. we were in denial or, you know, just didn't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's get digging. Okay, we're going to start over here and see what we've got. I wish I could convey to you guys how humid and muggy it is today. It's like, you know when all your bits and bobs are it's wet? It's so <laughs> muggy that Tyler loves hugs and asks for extra hugs. Yeah, I love when people touch me when it's muggy. It's my favorite thing. All right, potato time. I've done my best. Such a long way left to go. Oh! Wow. Got one. See, that's gonna make really good french fries. We're wow, these are actually like pretty big. Would they, these have kept growing? I doubt it because there is no like ability to catch sunshine. Mm -hmm. On a cloudy day. Some of these, like those little ones. Ooh, a little bit of tin foil, some olive Ooh. oil, salt, pepper, barbecue, I said. We, oh, we could dig up the garlic too. Oh. My God, we've been terrible plant daddies. <laughs> oh no, daddy. <laughs> Oh yeah! Look at that sucker! Look at that! How are you feeling about the harvest? Um, it's a little small for the amount of work we had to put in, like planting and then harvesting. Yeah, no kidding. We're definitely not getting as much as we'd hoped for, but there were still potatoes underneath, so that's yeah. kind of a win. Enough to make french fries. Yeah, so plenty that's... of french fries. Oh yeah. Look at that. Come on over, bring a bottle of ketchup. Yeah, bring a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've only got one row left, so I doubt there's going to be much more. Hey boys. Who knows, this could be a superstar yeah. row. Yeah, you never know. We um, still have quite a bit left to harvest though. It's not quite ready yet, but the asparagus is coming in really nicely. Look at all of the celery right here. Celery. celery. <laughs> Everything is coming in really nice, but I guess we kind of harvest it at different times. Um, one really cool thing though that came back is this plant. So we planted this last year. What is it called again? Ground cherries. Ground cherry, yeah. They produce these little um, fruits, like they little cherries that fall to the ground. This came back as a wild seed, which is really neat. This is exactly where we planted it last year, but the cauliflower didn't take, and this did. The taste of ground cherries, it's really unlike anything I've ever had before. They come in this like little paper sort of coating. They're so good and so healthy. So you just open it like this, and then So good. <laughs> You're little, literally dripping. Oh, I know. Okay, we're gonna go shower and clean up and wash our taters. Wanna wash our taters in the shower? Probably easier. Probably easier. All right, let's go down. I like how you said, you know what, we're gonna make enough fries that the commercial fry cutter is the model we need. I told you, I'm taking McCain's down. <laughs> no, why I went with this one is it suctions into place. Whereas the other one, like, if you really get going, I know that sucker's gonna go flying off the counter. Genuinely, this is not what I pictured. Really? I pictured something like a little hand press or something. I think this is why we're still happily married because I keep you on your toes. Oh, it needs put together. Of course it does. Okay, like look at these though. Like these are good suction cups. Like, what do you want to attach? <laughs> uh. Stop! First page, stop. Did wow. I t tell you about how I used to think french fries were made in a mold? No, but I would take that to the grave if I were you. Oh my god. To make it easier, I'm just gonna do this myself and not even involve you with putting it together, except for... 
We need a standard screwdriver, but is that a Mr. Square, a Chrissy Crossy, or a Flathead? Because those are all standard in this household. Wait, and then how needle, intense is this? Needle nose pliers, that one miffs me. Oh my god. We're making french fries now, buddy. <laughs> Sometimes I think I could have been a surgeon because I'm pretty good at like wearing headlamps and like putting things together. Two of the most important skill sets. Tell me that that can't go through. Oh, that can go through. That's the biggest one. There's only one that's like that. Two? But that one? We're gonna put the, we might end we'll up- We'll see what we get. Maybe it's hash browns. <laughs> we got a commercial hash browner. You know what I mean? we need to figure out? What? Do we have to lick the suction cups? Uh, I think maybe you could just put a little bit of water. That's just me. My grandpa had <coughs> licked this fry cutter. My family's been licking this fry cutter, <laughs> this hash brown cutter for 304 <laughs> years. <laughs> Wow. Wow. All right, well. We That's the commercial difference. We gotta fill out our warranty card. Oh, I tell you what. Okay, so let's try one. Well, we gotta wash these suckers, my love. Oh yeah, they're friggin' rotten. Rotten. We've been on the go all day. This is why we need a dishwasher. Oh. Like, we are gonna save so much money. Wow, actually, that's pretty impressive. I mean, it should be, it's commercial grade, but <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, like, that's crazy. Those are legit fries. 14 years in and I'm still surprising you, baby. <laughs> I don't think this is the right side to be doing it from. It's probably better where you are. Cause you would have, like I'm trying to push it where you'd be pulling and physics is better to pull. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're supposed to do it from this side. Like watch this. I'm pretty impressed with this thing. I'm very, very impressed. And I don't impress easy. What temperature does the oven need to be for the blooming onion? This is literally what it's like with Todd. Like if you've ever taken care of like an eight year old and you have to have like lots of activities and crafts for them. Look at this. Better breader bloomin' onion maker. Like it's a kit. Because it's better. Anyway. Like we don't need all that tonight. So I guess we're not doing the cotton candy machine either. I think that I'm going to sit. Can you top up the wine before you do? Yeah. Cause you're so much better. Like it's kind of like toast. It always tastes better if someone else prepares it for you. Those fries ended up taking forever to cook. By the time they were finally ready, it was two in the morning and we were really feeling the red wine. <laughs> Still feeling it today, which oh. I was coming over to see if you wanted some cold French fries that are left over. Yes, I do. The wine is lingering in our heads. Yeah, um, I love Todd's homemade red wine. There's truly nothing like it, but. It's a good time. It's a good time, but you really feel it the next day. So we've just been kind of relaxing all morning. We're having a little bit of a movie binge day and that's thanks to the sponsor, of today's video, Surfshark. We've shared with you over the years our love of Surfshark. Everything from getting good deals while traveling to actually protecting our identity while we're on the road. Thank you. Or, like today, yeah. we're using it to access streaming networks that aren't typically available to us based on our location. So you can do completely legit above board, change to England or to Australia and access the streaming services there. Where we live in Canada, our offering is very limited. So to be able to hop across the pond to the UK or go down under in Australia and get access to everything that they have in their libraries is really fun. It switches it up and gives us entertainment that we typically wouldn't have access to where we live. Surfshark is hooking you up with an exclusive offer and all you have to do is use the link in our description box down below and you're all set to go. For less than the price of a cup of coffee per month, you get privacy, security, and access to these content libraries all around the world. But we're gonna get back to streaming because I wanna eat my fries and just kinda like... Yeah, veg out for a bit? A little bit. Let's do it. Oh, wow. Oh, you can taste it if it's quality baked. Oh, is that organic? 
You know what I just realized? We didn't go over to the house after we dug up the potatoes to see all the <laughs> the work they did. Yeah. Got a little too excited about the French fries. Oh, and I can tell why. <laughs> you could really taste the different quality. Do you want to go over and check out the house? Hey? Should we go check the house out? Wow, you can see the vents from here already. Oh wow, right there. Yeah. yeah. So that's the kitchen one. Wow, it's so cool. So each space, there's a hole up through all the containers and in the duct upstairs. Drive the, vent there. Another one right here, look at that. I'm gonna go upstairs, this is where it takes. Yeah. Feels really cool. The guys, when they were here yesterday, they were explaining it, that this system is the lungs of the house and now I can't look at it any other way. Like it really is the house breathing. Yeah, wow. So this is how it goes through the floor. So then these are like branching off to the different rooms. So cool. Yeah. Don't you think? I think it's really cool. And what's also interesting about this system is like how we don't have to have the bathroom fans either. So like, we're, it makes it a little bit easier. We don't have to do that step on top. Yeah. Like that's really cool. It's exciting. It's another big step. This is what I'm gonna chalk this up for, a big win. Big win. But I'm ready to go lay back down. Yeah, <laughs> we are feeling the effect. So I think we're just gonna go enjoy our movie binge for the day and we'll see you next Sunday.